take off. Lift off. I don't know. Blast off. <laughs> Jump off. Ha ha. Jump off. Did you get it? No. Because <laughs> of the subject of today. Oh, oh my sorry. God. <laughs> oh. Maybe I should have said leap off. Yeah. I still probably wouldn't have gotten it, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It was a really shit joke. <laughs> okay. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'll introduce myself. <laughs> Would you like to go around the room? <laughs> or please say a nice fact about yourself. Yeah, tell us. <laughs> I, I hated when I was in school and they would be like, they would say, tell us your name and something you like that starts with the first letter of your name. Because like, oh. E, you have like eggs and elephants. And I'm just kind of like, I'd be like, I like <laughs> eggs. <laughs> I remember being asked at like summer camp, like, oh, everybody go around the room, say like your name and an animal that starts with the first letter of your name. What the hell starts with N? Like, oh. Like Nat doesn't even sound or doesn't even start with N. And, and there was a girl called Nicola in my in my summer camp as well, and she picked knit as in like <laughs> stuff from your hair, like headlights. Oh, I didn't know that's what they like, were called, but that's gross. That's like it's kind of a slang term. Okay. Like knit is the term for like the little eggs. Yeah. So when they say you have knits, oh god, that's <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, she picked the only N animal. For our listeners, Emily is currently racking her brain <laughs> to think of something beginning with N. <laughs> See it in her face. I was going to say this audio platform doesn't portray that very well. It doesn't. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't show me looking off in the distance with a puzzled look on my face. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's been a struggle my whole yeah. life. You know, not having an answer for going around the room things. Yeah. So my name's Emily, and um, eggs are fine, but I don't. <laughs> I wouldn't say like I love eggs. Like you don't want to sit beside the person who loves eggs. No. You really don't. <laughs> <laughs> elephants, yeah. Like, people can get, like, a fixation on elephants. That's cool. Yeah. But, like, eggs, no. Yeah. It's a bit, mm, a bit strange. Uh, and, yeah, my name is Neve, And uh, there are no animals to start with N. So, welcome to Rowan and Pine. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try to make a joke about uh, the episode today. What there is... are animals to start with F. Yes. Today, we're talking about frogs. Yes. Frogs and toads. Kind of interchangeably. <laughs> yes. Emily is going to educate me about frogs and toads and their connection to folklore and i'm assuming their symbolism yeah and... sort of yeah so sort of like folklore mythology symbology is that a word Coined it today <laughs> symbology i think that's a word hey shakespeare made up all his own words so like, <laughs> why can't we modern shakespeare is here uh i want to apologize for our previous episode that we put out midsummer which will actually be two episodes ago when we put this out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we went off on a lot of tangents. Some people told me it was fine and that they liked it. I think those who didn't like it probably held their tongue. Well, no, Yoon didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Yoon, my fiancé, texted me and then came in to make sure that I read his text message. Oh my god. That he thought that we rambled too much and that I should have cut most of it out. So I was like... Yeah, thanks so much for your feedback on the episode that's already out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I gave you the opportunity to listen to it beforehand and you didn't take it, so. <laughs> it's your fault. Blaming yeah. your husband or your fiance. My uh, husband was actually like, it's like, wow, like the Fahrenheit and Celsius thing. I never really knew about that. He was like, I didn't know that like one was relative to like body temperature. And I was like, I didn't either. And he was like, that's pretty cool that I learned that today. And I was like, oh, you're so precious. <laughs> He's so sweet. Shout out to my husband. But like, <laughs> that was a complete ramble, and I still haven't fact checked that. We're gonna like, <laughs> we're gonna just say that this, this will be like part of the lore of this podcast that like uh, Celsius is relative to uh, boiling point and Fahrenheit is body temperature. Yeah, that's that's our new reality. That's our own folklore and mythology. Yeah, the Rowan and Pine uh, mythology. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you uh, if you enjoyed our midsummer episode, please let us know. Um, and prove you and wrong because like he does like to give his opinion when people don't ask for it so <laughs> he's also your uh i keep wanting to call him your husband because you guys have been together for so long but um <laughs> common law or something like that i don't do you guys have that there yeah kind of but it doesn't really mean a whole lot anymore yeah. <laughs> does anything mean anything we anymore? are affianced you're going to be married to him so he's going to give you his very truthful honest brutal opinion Oh yeah, no, he does all the time because he's like he takes he takes great pride in it. He's always like people ask me things because like they know I'll be honest, and I'm like yeah, but people also don't ask you things, <laughs> <laughs> and you're also very honest. You could you could wait to be asked. Yeah. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> Even when you're listening to this, come come see me. 
Anyway, so <laughs> me and Neve both really like folklore. And you know what folklore starts with? Oh my god, what a good segue. Yeah, it starts with F. the letter F. <laughs> and today I'm talking about frogs. I wanted to ask you, do you know the difference between a frog and a toad? I actually don't. I get the feeling the frogs are cuter, but I don't think that's like a scientific... <laughs> <laughs> Not backed by science. Frogs usually have nice, nicer skin. Is it something to do with how they reproduce or something? No. So... Frogs have long legs, longer than their head and their body, which are made for hopping. Um, Toads, on the other hand, have much shorter legs and prefer to crawl around rather than hop. Frogs have smooth, somewhat slimy skin, and toads have dry, warty skin. Oh, sorry. Why is the thought of a a toad crawling around really freaking creepy? Um, I don't know. Like, I'm just, uh, oh, that's so creepy. I have the same issue with snakes because I'm just like, okay, I... I understand its muscles, but how do they move? Mm. And so quickly, yeah. it really bothers me. Oh, I can't think about it. So, so that's the difference between frogs and toads. And um, when I was a kid, I was kind of like that weirdo who like loved like catching frogs and things like that. So I would always catch like little tree frogs, and I would try to keep them as pets. But then they would end up turning into like bacon because like I didn't give them enough water or something, which is which is really sad. <laughs> but um i thought you were gonna say that like you ate them i was like what? no no i did not eat them <laughs> this got really dark I did not eat them <laughs> um it's funny to me because i was at my grandparents house this is usually where i would like be catching amphibians and whatever there was like this huge toad that was sitting on like the railing outside of my grandparents house and my grandpa like showed us because we were little we were like three or four years old and he's like oh look it's a toad when my brother and I were little, I have a twin brother. Shout out to twin brother. <laughs> but when we were little, we called hey, Emily's twin. <laughs> we we called them Todds instead of Toads. <laughs> and like, so we're like, oh look, it's a Todd. And like, my grandparents are pointing to it and like, oh look, it's a Todd. And I go to look at it, and it jumps in my face. <gasps> and like, oh no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> and it like thoroughly freaked me out as a small child. But then I was like, like my grandma would bring it up a lot. She would be like, oh yeah, it's really funny how you had this like traumatic experience with the with a toad and then you ended up like befriending them and being like super well, like you faced your fear yeah so my childhood bedroom is on the second floor and on two different occasions i've had toads in, or not toads frogs in my room um we think that they somehow get in the rain gutters oh and come in my window because that's the only explanation yeah Either that or they're in, like, the washing, but, like, usually, like, clean clothes come off, like, the clothesline and then are, like, downstairs yeah. for a while and get, like, folded and stuff. So we have no idea how they are getting, but, like, little teeny tiny yeah. ones. But like that, it's the jumping. I can't, like, I don't know where they're going to go. You can't tell what direction they're going to go. Very unpredictable. It's, yes, it's it's absolutely terrifying. Well, that's <laughs> sad. <laughs> I really, I still really <laughs> like frogs. No, they're, like... They're incredibly cute, but I was just like, just don't jump on yeah. me. Or like, give me some like indication that you're about to like jump <laughs> onto my face. Just please stay away. We can love each other from afar. Yeah, calm down. All right. Yeah. I also wanted to say um, in this episode, I'll be talking a lot about frogs used as potions and things like that. Um, but please don't mm. ingest frogs or any secretions from frogs or toads because it's usually poisonous yeah so to and anybody listening don't people get high off it um i'm not sure i don't <laughs> i wouldn't advise trying to like lick a frog or anything so okay full disclosure i i'm getting this from the simpsons so uh <laughs> that's probably not like a reliable fact pretty sure somebody licked a, a frog or a toad yeah. in the Sim- simpsons and went on like an acid trip yeah i did see some stuff about people like believing that frogs had um hallucinogenic properties and so they would like kind of like mm-hmm. have i don't know if ceremonies is the right word but they would have like like a party and be like let's like some frogs and see what happens but i think usually <laughs> people end up getting sick and it doesn't work out how they thought it would so as you were just talking about frogs in your bedroom um frogs are not native to ireland but apparently some students released them into the wild after some like college experiment or something and they have now made their homes there some of the folklore in Ireland includes the idea that you can tell what the weather will be like based upon the color of a frog. Oh, I think, yeah, that sounds pretty familiar. Okay. Yeah. And it's, um, 
I think you can tell like where they're from based on the color, but I had no idea about that from them not being native to Ireland. Yeah. I assumed because it was so wet here that they, you know, were part of the landscape. Right. Yeah, it does make sense. It's kind of, it's where they want to be. <laughs> yeah, it's like prime frog location. Yeah. Like, because I see them a lot. Like, you know, anytime it's there's heavy rainfall, like really heavy rainfall, you'll usually see them like jumping in and out of ditches or I always see them at night. So I don't know if they're like... Are they nocturnal? I was going to say nomadic. Yeah. But. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> They're very nomadic because they ended up in Ireland. <laughs> I actually am not sure about that, but I know that um, my mom lives out by like some wetlands. And yeah, once it starts being like twilight, the frogs and toads and stuff start making a lot of noise. But yeah, so for all of the frogs in your room, you can blame those students that release them into the... The uh, countryside of Ireland. Assholes. They ruined your life. <laughs> like forced like immigration of the poor little frogs. <laughs> oh. In ancient Egypt times, people would collect clay from sources that had a lot of amphibians. Because they encountered frogs so much, the frogs became part of their belief system. History indicates that the belief was that frogs were born from the mud and the water. It seems that this belief was a result of the Nile River flooding during the rainy season because frogs seem to appear out of nowhere. But as the science now shows, Nile River, you are not the father. There is a frog. <laughs> there is a frog. There's a frog headed. What a way to deliver that fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a frog headed Egyptian goddess named Heket. Heket. Ugh, I'm not 100% on the pronunciation. But um, she's the goddess associated with childbirth and fertility. They said if you wanted to give birth, you should touch a frog. Knives decorated with frogs placed on top of a pregnant woman's belly was said to bring protection to the baby. Apparently, frogs were so important to the ancient Egyptians that they were often embalmed when they died. So that's pretty interesting Whoa. to think about embalming. So frogs and cats. Yeah, really special. I get it. <laughs> How would you even like, is it like a tiny little, like, like I'm imagining a tiny little frog. A frog-sized, like, sarcophagi? Yeah. Is that, is that the plural? Maybe. I'm gonna, I am gonna. I sound really smart there, didn't I? <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna go with that. Is it tiny little, like, frog, frog-shaped frog sarco sarcophagi with, like, tiny little, like, wrappings around um, the frog? Yeah. Do you think they cross their arms over their chest? <laughs> Aww. I'm just imagining... You're making me like frogs. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, embalming how... You know, because when you embalm humans, you have to, like, drain the blood and then do all this stuff. Mm. It's like doing it to a tiny little frog. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Is it, like, something that they got the new guy to do? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe as a joke? You're on frog duty today. Gotta start with the frogs. And he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, we always do this. And then, like, secretly, they're all laughing. They're like, sorry, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe Greg, like, spent, like, all afternoon embalming four frogs? <laughs> Fucking Greg, man. <laughs> I also hate myself because Greg is, like, my go-to name. <laughs> Every random guy is always named Greg. <laughs> Greg's like a new guy name. <laughs> or Phil. <laughs> or like if you want to give like the millennial Josh. All right. <laughs> All right, Josh. Time to get started, right? Yeah. You're going to get this frog. You're going to stick your finger down its mouth. <laughs> and Josh is like, what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, we do this all the time. Yeah. And he's like, I don't know, man. This doesn't sound real. And then he uses some like TikTok phrase. No cap. <laughs> you have to embalm the frogs. Oh, yeah, really? No cap? <laughs> Lit, 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 lit. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> the ancient Greeks and Romans adopted a lot of the same beliefs as the Egyptians, believing that frogs came from mud and water. I'm sorry, the Romans plagiarized so much from everybody who came before them. Yeah, they're them. fucking assholes. Everyone's like, everyone's like, oh, Roman god this, Roman god that. It's like, oh, where'd they get that idea? Oh yeah, Greece. Yeah, and then they... Or they get that idea? Oh, Egypt. And then they like forced Catholicism down everybody's throats by like murdering people. It's like, no, we're doing this now. There's only one god. It's like, but you said that we could... No, nope, yeah. there's only one. What about, what about the Greek mythology? <laughs> we also killed his kids, so you have to be really divine yeah <laughs> but the belief that frogs came from mud and water was more solidified because frog mating season would often coincide with heavy rains as you kind of talked about how like it gets really wet and then all of a sudden frogs are jumping all over the place oh and they're jumping all over each other yeah after the rain there would okay. be frogs everywhere they would go into people's houses crowd the walkways the streets literally everywhere and 
Yes, literally everywhere. <laughs> I realize it's <laughs> oh a cultural gosh. thing to say literally for things that are not literal. But we're just going to go right past that. It was called frog rain because it often happened after heavy rain. A lot of different cultures used frogs and toads to predict the weather and specifically rain because when it rains, when it's wet, you know, the frogs are happy and they make a ton of noise. Aww. Um. In China, a toad is assigned to the yin principle. The fertility is associated with wealth. The three-legged toad with a coin in its mouth is used to attract money in feng shui. In Japan, it is similar, but it's also known to be a symbol of happiness. Toad-shaped amulets can be found in wallets to hold money together. Japanese travelers like to use toads when traveling, and specifically when traveling across large bodies of water. And I kind of wonder why that would be, but then I'm like, is it like a belief that because the frogs like the water, or like maybe they would like help you swim, or like, I don't know. Yeah, you're like inv- invoking like frog characteristics. You're like, you know, if something happens here, I got my, my frog. Yeah. <laughs> frog protector. Yeah. I will become a frog. I'm going to make like a frog. Yeah. Yeah, because they're amphibious. They go on the land as well. Yeah, so. cute yeah. little guys. Um, in Mesoamerican culture, the toad was worshipped and it was a symbol of rain and fertility. The Aztec rain god Tlaloc was better translated as he who makes things sprout. He was often depicted with toads surrounding him to represent the cardinal directions. The toad was also represented in art having feline or non-naturalistic a- a- attributes, including claws and fangs. <laughs> I always want to read it as attributes and then yeah. some special... So uh, the toads had claws and fangs. Yeah, like in art, they would paint them or sculpt them as having claws and fangs. And also, it was said that it kind of like overlapped with, I don't know if overlapped is the right word, but jaguar imagery. Like they would kind of try to make toads look like jaguars. Okay. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, I think it'll make more sense after I talk about South America. In South America, before the birth of the divine hero twins which is another story I would really like to cover because it's super interesting. It is told that their natural mother was killed by the jaguar people, but the unborn twins were saved by the toad grandmother, who is the mistress of the earth, owner of fire and mother of jaguars. She has feline characteristics that change back and forth between feline and amphibian forms. The manner in which she preserves the unborn twins differs somewhat from area to area, Often it's the eggs with the children inside, or else it's the um, pregnant uterus, which she places close to her magical fire. Eventually the twins emerge and she rears them, teaching them to hunt, cure, etc. They in turn have vowed to avenge the death of their natural mother, and as the foster mother is... Oh my goodness. (laughs) I get really caught up doing this. (laughs) So eventually the twins emerge and she rears them, teaching them to hunt, cure, etc. They in turn have vowed to avenge the death of their natural mother. And as the foster mother is also the mother of jaguars, they kill her and dismember her and incinerate her body in a clearing in the forest. Oh, wow. So it's pretty brutal. There was this lady who saved them and then they're like, you know what? Because you're associated with the people that killed us, bye. Yeah, it's like, were they afraid she was going to come back or something? (laughs) Yeah, for real. I'm just like, bruh, she saved your life. Ungrateful little boogers. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) (laughs) We are coming up on birth and fertility in folklore. Are you excited about that? Yeah. I'm excited because um, I guess I'll share some personal info. My husband and I are doing IVF right now, which is a wild ride. And I actually had a dream the other night that there was like tons of frogs around me Ooh. and I looked it up in the morning and the, it was like, this represents fertility. And I was like, oh, really? It's very interesting. And then I was doing this research and I was like, even more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. Maybe that's a good sign for us. Who knows? Yeah, maybe it is. Like, hang on to that energy. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll keep dreaming about frogs. Hold on to the frog. So yeah, so birth and fertility in folklore, specifically frog folklore. In ancient Greece and Rome, toads and the uterus were symbolically interchangeable. I also saw something about in Mexico, the word for uterus is the same word for like abundance. Oh, okay. I don't think this is true because of, I don't know. I just, I don't, I was trying to then research that and I couldn't find anything that backed that up. So could be true, could be not true. Might be something to look even further into. It makes sense though, because like, a lot of fertility imagery is like the cornucopia, you know, and that kind of represents abundance. Oh, yeah. And it's just like when you were like, oh, the cornucopia, I'm like, oh, Thanksgiving. And then I'm like, 
people put cornucopias on the table and i was just like a uterus on the table <laughs> oh god and it'll be one of those weird places like guess what you're eating it's my placenta yeah <laughs> just some mild Happy thanksgiving <laughs> with your dinner <laughs> oh my god so disgusting toad or frog was a symbol of fertility more so than it was a symbol of prosperity to the layman it's it's more likely that it's going to be a symbol for um, fertility than money. Sometimes it's like some people think it's to do with prosperity, but it's actually supposed to be fertility. Is that what that means? You know, we kind of talked about this. I can't remember what episode, but you know how it's like in like medieval times in Europe, Western Europe, they had dragons mm -hmm. in their folklore. Mm -hmm. And then in China, they also have dragons in their folklore. And it's kind of like... In the broad sense, more people had it as a symbol of fertility than prosperity. Oh, like okay. how it said in China and Japan, they believed it was more of like a symbol of like abundance of money. Okay. The toad being a symbol of fertility carried all the way to Central Europe in the Middle Ages. And this was when the uterus was said to be a separate wandering being inside of a woman's body. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking of all those poor women that get diagnosed with wandering uteruses. And it's just like <laughs> wait is like, this a real thing yeah it's like well what that's it's like a medical term like women have a but they can't uterus. wander that far <laughs> no like there's not much place to go like i'm so sorry to anybody listening who has a wandering uterus i'm sure it's i'm sure it's awful i don't know what the symptoms are but like it just yeah. sounds so freaking strange like <laughs> where's it going your bum Especially like when what? I Right, when I was first reading this, I imagined it like like with this little like knapsack being like, and I would walk 500 miles. <laughs> and I was just like, where does it wander to? <laughs> yeah, so it's like it just camps out in different women. Is it like one uterus? Like, are people sharing this uterus? Like, Or does it like end up in your shoulder? <laughs> because I, it's like... Can you wear it like a purse? A like <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the um it's like a meme it's like a photo on the internet it was showing the size of a like your average uterus and so it's just like this tiny thing mm -hmm. a lot of people think it's bigger than it is but it's like this is your uterus after you have a baby and it looks like a cornucopia <laughs> i don't know it's <laughs> it's giant it's like yeah. it's like two feet long it's like this huge like rubbery <laughs> scary i saw that and i was like holy shit but like, yeah, that's that's absolutely terrifying. Like, I assume it goes back. It does. <laughs> it doesn't stay that way forever. You're not just like, oh, God, like trying to rearrange your stomach around it. Yeah. But I saw this at the beginning of trying to do IVF and I was like, we sure we want to do this? <laughs> God. <laughs> they say when you're pregnant, you have like 30% more blood and there's like all this like weird stuff that happens. And I'm like, um, maybe let's rethink this. <laughs> sometimes you can learn too much emily sometimes you can read I, too much about things and then you know things true. although i have to say i absolutely adore that woman in texas who has been arguing that she shouldn't have got ticketed for driving in the carpool lane because she's pregnant because <laughs> under texan law there was another person in the car with her like i want to find that woman and i want to kiss her feet like that is amazing it is so perfect does she have a gofundme <laughs> I, like i really hope so i need to i need to like follow up with her i just saw that article and i was like she is amazing <laughs> that is brilliant because yeah if texas is gonna be like that then i'm gonna be like that yeah too. <laughs> it's like no you can't take it me but right. also like the women who are pregnant with little boys and like they just tell people that they have a tiny penis <laughs> It's like technically there's a little penis <laughs> it is technically part of me right now <laughs> oh my goodness anyway back to birth and fertility and folklore <laughs> so we don't get too tangent time this episode is this rowan and pine after um, dark we're just talking about like <laughs> penises what's that like sex therapist who's on the radio oh it's Do you know who i'm talking about no I mean, it's got to be just like a U.S. thing. Or is it Delilah? Delilah after dark. <laughs> she like gives like she gives like advice about oh Delilah, I love this person and they don't like me back. Oh, anyway, <laughs> I would be terrible. I'm like okay, find somebody else. <laughs> Fucking move on. <laughs> Get a cat. <laughs> yeah, maybe multiple cats. Yeah, and a dog. Yeah, and some frogs. So, <laughs> get some frogs. <laughs> In places of Catholic pilgrimage, which are associated with women suffering, of course, because we know who the Bible was written for. 
You can still find votive offerings in the shape of a toad. So these women were like, I'm suffering. I need help. Toads. The toads will save me. The toads will save me. Help me and my babies. In witchcraft is where we see frogs no longer having positive associations like the Egyptians using them to provide fertility and protection to children. You don't like the weather? Get out your cauldrons. (laughs) Witches would make toad soup, which was a stew containing snakes, toads, and frogs. This was an attempt to control the weather. Apparently, in Basque country tradition, you could identify a witch's presence by a marking in the shape of a toad's foot. So, I don't know. It didn't say, like, where this marking would be. Like, if it's on their body or... Yeah. Is that kind of like the witch's mark? You know, where they're supposed to... What is that? So, the witch's mark was something that during witch trials, um, they would search your body for. It was usually, like, very conveniently looked like a mole or a freckle. It's like, oh my god, white women... Have moles and freckles. Wow, this is so like witchy. But um, the lore around it was that a witch's mark was where she fed her familiar from, almost like breastfeeding. Oh, okay. But like it could be anywhere on her body. Yeah. Something like were some of them in the shape of toads and frogs. But like I guess they could have been familiars too. Yeah, that's what I read that a lot of witches apparently had frogs or toads like as their familiar. Which is kind of sad, too, because, like, maybe sh- maybe it was, like, a woman who was trying to invoke, like, fertility or something, you know? Oh, yeah. And that's what they say she is, was, like... She could have been seen with a frog or toad. Yeah. And they say that a lot about how, um, like, with the Salem witch trials, that it was pretty sad because a lot of times the women who were victims of it were women who were childless or, mm-hmm. you know, didn't have a spouse. They might have been just, like, cool-ass lesbians. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like somebody who couldn't provide children for the husband and either like the husband left or I don't know. It's just really sad to think about the fact that, you know, that's a really good point to make that maybe these women were um, struggling with infertility and were trying to shake a little magic on it. And then people were like, you're a witch. Yeah. It's like that's the only possible explanation she could have for like being around frogs. Right. And toads, um, when it was actually, she was just, you know. Right. Or she might have wanted to Aww. have a career in herpetology. <laughs> is, that, is that the official name for study of frogs? Um, I don't know the exact definition, but it's like frogs and snakes, lizards, Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. I just know this because. creepy crawly. Yeah. And my Stop. volunteer job, it's like one of the things like take care of the herps and it's the frogs and all those guys. <laughs> The herps. Yeah. <laughs> the turtles and everybody. Who I love. Shout out to all my little herp, herp friends. Not to be used with friends with herpes, which, you know, also you have our sympathy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. So in Pyrenees, people believe that witches have the image of a toad in their left eye, which is pretty cool. I would like to have a That is cool. I would like to have like, I don't know. It'd be cool if you could do art in your eye. I think there are eye tattoo but that's creepy in some folklore it says that witches would extract skin secretions or saliva from a toad and use it to make flying potions and invisible spells again don't consume frogs (laughs) in in christianity frogs are considered to be evil and are often demonized which is why we don't like christians i'm totally kidding yeah (laughs) we love you (laughs) we're not kidding (laughs) Um, They were associated with boastful sinners, gossips, and hypocrites. In the Middle Ages in Europe, the devil is depicted as having three toads on his coat of arms. However, though, you know, frogs aren't always depicted as evil in Christianity. There are some contradictory portrayals of frogs and toads in Christianity being um, just semi-mischievous house guardians. You know, cause a little trouble, but also they're looking out for your house. Um, Yeah, just hippity hop on a bite the place. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, they were looking out for your house, Neve. You're all getting mad at them. Yeah, but I'm also like trying to go to sleep <laughs> and I'm 12. <laughs> and they're crawling on your head. Like I'm, I'm past the princess stage, you yeah. know? It's not like a cool thing. It's like, oh, maybe he's a prince. It's like, no, I, I have homework. Like <laughs> They're just trying to tuck you into bed and you're just being an asshole to them. <laughs> trying to like invite one of the neighbor's cats to come in and fight and get him. <laughs> they're like, sweet dreams, Neve. They're trying to kiss you on the head and you're batting them away. <laughs> <laughs> screaming for my dad 
And that's how I'm not a princess. <laughs> <laughs> but this next little segment goes back to um, folk cures and folk medicine. For those of you who listened to our first episode, is a little tie-in. Which, by the way, it would be cool if we have a follow-up episode because... I was telling Emily, a lot of people have shared with me yeah. their folklore story. So if anybody wants to send me a voice clip on like WhatsApp or send one into our Instagram or my own Instagram, if you if you follow me on there um, and you want to be on the podcast, we can do a little follow up episode. Yeah. Or if you want to send an email. Yeah, we can read it out. Rowan and Pine Pod at gmail.com. And the and is spelled out. It's not the ampersand. I feel like I've discovered more things, so it'd be it would be fun to do a follow-up episode. It was also our first episode, so I'm mm-hmm. saying this like we're uh seasoned veterans at this point. <laughs> this is episode number four. <laughs> yeah, but I do believe we have gotten a little bit better. <laughs> yes, we have. Well, we have not gotten even worse if, anyway. Even if just five percent better it matters. Yeah. So Frog potions were used as aphrodisiacs, again, don't eat frogs, for (laughs) impotency and to prevent infertility and for birth control. So I don't really understand how you could be preventing infertility and also being used as birth control, but you know, whatever. These are beliefs that people held, so Mm -hmm. I'm not going to come at them for having contradictory beliefs. (laughs) Um. Frog liver is also in two halves, and one half is said to carry the antidote to any poison in the world. Toad lungs were believed to be means of perfect murder of a husband. So uh, do what you will with that information. (laughs) You did not hear it from us. Tell them, hey, baby, (laughs) want to go on a trip tonight? (laughs) Lick lick this frog. (laughs) And then he's dead. Um, it was also believed that frogs could clean a wife's mind of adultery. <laughs> so, like, clean her mind, like, so that she doesn't want to commit adultery or that she forgets that you committed adultery. <laughs> <laughs> also, the overlap of, like, you're murdering your husband with a frog, but then it could also clear your mind of adultery. It's kind of, <laughs> I'm trying to make the connection in my head right now of, do you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> yeah, it's like, people leave the frogs alone, like, what, like... <laughs> Yeah. What's with all these she's married like, couples? Yeah, she's like, if this doesn't clear my sexy thoughts about what's his name at the at the shoe shop, shoe repair. <laughs> Down by the village well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I'm just going to kill my husband with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just it win-win. Is also... <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just win-win. It's like, I get yeah. Brother Francis or I forget Brother Francis. <laughs> <laughs> Goody Thompson. Why are they always called names like that? I don't know. <laughs> Brother Francis sounds kind of like a monk, which is also adultery. You can't fancy monks. <laughs> no one's gonna say. He sounds like somebody who would have a sweet haircut and a robe. <laughs> <laughs> Old British legends say that carrying a dried out frog in a pouch around your neck would prevent epileptic seizures. I wonder if the they should have hit up the Egyptians. They could have had an embalmed frog around their neck instead of a yeah. crusty one. Um, it's believed that putting a live frog in your mouth is the cure for thrush. So tell that to the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> My granda didn't know this. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because the Irish didn't have frogs for a long time. Yeah. Um, they had to find another way. There are also beliefs that swallowing live frogs, hopefully small ones, is the cure for tuberculosis and whooping cough. Whoa. Have you ever heard... Have you ever heard somebody with whooping cough? Like heard somebody with the cough or heard yeah. somebody have it? No. It's so weird. My brother had it a couple times when we were kids and it sounds like a dog barking. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's like, whoa. <laughs> it's super weird. Oh, actually, that might have been what my brother had when we were kids. Um, but my dad just called him Barky for like <laughs> <laughs> for like six months. And he'd be like, is oh, Barky no. up for school yet? <laughs> So maybe that's what he had, but it was that's also so around sad. the time that, like, I think I was I was quite small and I was trying to tell people that he had a chesty cough, but like I didn't know, like I was telling everyone he had a Chester cough. A and Chester mom was just cough? going with it. And she's like, "What? Well, tell the tell the lady what's wrong with him." I'm like, "He has a Chester cough." <laughs> like me, totally <laughs> earnest. <laughs> that is so cute. <laughs> yeah, my poor poor brother would have it, and it's um. It can get cleared up if you're um, like in cold weather, 
just okay. for anybody that has whooping cough and needs some medical <laughs> advice from me, the expert. <laughs> this is where they come to for medical advice. You're supposed to go out in the cold because I guess it helps with like the swelling in your lungs or whatever is happening. Again, not a doctor. A lot of other illnesses that my brother would have. He had like a lot of lung issues and um a lot of the other ones like bronchitis and stuff like that. Like they would say, oh, like take him in the bathroom and turn the shower on and like make it steamy because that would help. And so I don't remember if it was my mom or my dad. Again, this is not like shitting on them. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys are listening. <laughs> You're just telling a story about, so my brother had it, this whooping cough, and one of my parents were like, oh, well, you know, anytime he's had a cough before, we're always bringing him into the steam. And so they did that, but it made it worse because the cold is like the antidote for this. Okay. So it was like the opposite of what he needed? Yeah. And then he had to oh. go to the hospital and it was really sad. Um, He should have just swallowed a frog. Yeah. That would have been better. If only you had known. Also, have you heard of toadstones? No. I've heard of toadstools. I don't know why my brain went to, like, frog poop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that kind of is what, what that sounded like. Instead of the mushrooms. A toadstone, which is also known as bufonite, from Latin <laughs> bufo, which means toad. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Bufos. <laughs> <laughs> when you say it like that, it sounds like an insult. It's like, all right, bufo. It's like, oh, I hate my brother's like best friend. He's such a bufo. <laughs> I suppose. Borax and Kronstein, which is German, is a mythical stone or gem that was thought to be found in the head of a toad. It was supposed to be the antidote to a poison in that it is like batrachite, supposedly formed in the heads of frogs. To me, this sounds like somebody licked a frog and like made all this shit up and then told people, <laughs> there's a gemstone inside the frog. And you're like, dude, seriously, you've been up yeah. for six days. And he's so, like, no, no, no. If you bash the frog's head, and no, no, no. Let's not do that. Yeah. So they basically, they thought that these were from frog's heads, but they were actually button-like fossilized teeth of lepidotes. Is that like, or, do you know, one of those weird like fishy animals? Yeah, extinct genus of ray finned fish from the Jurassic and the Cretaceous periods. That was a very good guess on my part, I have to say. Seriously. <laughs> I was reading this and I was like, I don't even know what I'm reading. <laughs> I felt like I was reading another language. They appear to be stones that are in perfect form and were set by European jewelers into magical rings and amulets from medieval times until the 18th century. Cool. Toadstones were considered to be the antidotes of poison or epilepsy. Again, very interesting about how frogs keep coming up with like epileptic struggles yeah um as early as the 14th century people began to put toadstones on their jewelry and clothing because of its supposed magical properties in their folklore a toadstone was required to be removed from an old toad while the creature was still alive as instructed by the 17th century naturalist edward topsell shout out to edward eddie boy it could be done by setting <laughs> what a <laughs> It could be done by setting the toad on a piece of red cloth. So this is you put it on a red cloth and then okay, you just cut it out of its head. <laughs> we had this on the folklore episode. Why are these things always so oddly specific? Right, like there was a thing of like get goat hair and put it up a chimney. Like who? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like with the tooth spell that we read at the yeah. end, where it was like do this and throw it in the river and or it's like turn around three times in the moonlight and shout at your neighbor like why <laughs> who's coming up with these it's obviously somebody who's like the best exaggerator you've ever heard which is why i think there's a lot of that in irish folklore because we are really good at exaggerating and it's like no, no no i swear to god this works but with the toadstones it was said if a person was bitten by a venomous creature a toadstone would be touched against the affected part to cure it which i think is really interesting considering the knowledge that we have now i can't imagine putting a stone on a snake bite and being like this this is perfect. <laughs> this is fine. Um, you don't have to bring me to the hospital. Alternatively, Johannes de Cuba in his book Hortus Sanit Sanitatius claimed that toadstone would help with kidney disease and earthly happiness. Earthly happiness? Like you're, to make you happy? You're screwed in the afterlife, <laughs> but while you're here. <laughs> is that like a cure for depression? Is this serotonin? <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? I have this rock. <laughs> so that's what I have about frogs and folklore, there was a lot more stuff. Again, maybe we could do like a part two about it. But yeah, everything that I found was just like super interesting. They've been like 
close to humans for so long that they're always there's like one of those animals that there's always a use for them or like there's always some yeah. sort of folklore around them there's so many other like animals or like species that like you never hear anything about so i think it's like whatever humans have had the most contact with over the years maybe and maybe just because of the abundance of frogs like how in i think it was saying in in greece or rome one of the two how they they called it frog rain because there would be frogs everywhere and you know it's i think it's pretty rare that you would have something like cats just be like flooding the streets <laughs> well i think as well cuz like frogs reproduce at such a huge rate like they'll they'll lay like thousands of eggs and like hatch like thousands of tadpoles there is that guy on tiktok that like people are afraid that he's a super villain because he has released he says it's like a million i don't know how he would possibly know that uh frogs like he nursed like loads of tadpoles to frogs and then just released them in his backyard but everyone's like he's a super villain <laughs> yeah it kind of sounds like it I yeah he knows what he's doing yeah he could like cripple the ecosystem there like they'll eat every insect <laughs> seriously what an idiot that's oh this is why i hate i see all those videos like people on tiktok who will be like oh i found this baby bunny and i nursed it back to health i'm like can you just take it to your wildlife rehab yeah or the people it's like oh guess what i found this abandoned puppy and it's like a perfectly healthy looking dog dog with some dirt smeared on it is that your puppy that you got and you're pretending you found it <laughs> You're trying to make us like you. Are you saying this is a rescue dog and it's like literally like a 1500 year old French bulldog? Like, <laughs> yeah. Nobody abandoned that. All right. That's way yeah. too expensive. So, just to round us off, um, because Emily put obviously all the work into this episode, um, I said I would look up some frog facts. So, this is from Great Lakes Guide. Emily lives near a Great Lake. I, I don't. do. <laughs> Lake Michigan. Although Superior is my favorite Great Lake for reasons. Superior is Superior. <laughs> I would have been very sad if you didn't actually say that. <laughs> really? That it was Superior. Yeah. So one of the facts is that frogs don't drink. They don't drink through their mouths. They drink through a patch on their pelvic area when they get thirsty. Do they pee from that same area? I really hope not. There's definitely been like instances where I've heard about p people picking up frogs that then piss all over them. So as like a defense mechanism. Yeah. So that could be part of it. I don't know. When frogs are swallowing, um, like when they're eating like a fly or like a tasty, tasty like larva or something, um, mm -hmm. there are some species of frogs that flatten down their eyeballs into the roof or and down into their tongue through the roof of their mouth and it helps them swallow. So like the muscles of their what? So their eyeballs help them swallow. Yeah, they swallow with their eyeballs. Oh my goodness! But like when you think about it, like if you've ever seen a nature show and you've seen a frog eat something, its whole head flattens down, which like does kind of make sense. Can you imagine drinking from your pelvis and using your eyes to swallow? <laughs> I hope it's a it's a torture that I never know. I was looking for some toad facts, and the first toad fact that I came across was. Toads taste bad. <laughs> they probably do. And they do not rip it. They don't? The sound that we are used to is just a very specific genus of frogs. And it's been added into like most of like, you know, like our TV shows or our cartoons or anything like that. But most most toads do not rip it. So they don't, they don't make the ribbit sound, but they do make sound. They do make sound. Uh, actually, something that I was reading said they have a, a very pretty singing voice. I have not heard this. <laughs> I didn't know that they could sing, but I think it's, it must be like stock audio that um you hear, like apparently the audio that we associate with the bald eagle is not what they sound like. Um, yeah, it just sounds more I majestic. Think, I think that the eagle sound that a lot of people use is usually a hawk, mm -hmm. which is yeah. really frustrating to me because hawks are the homies. I'm just like, oh, the eagle gets all the credit. <laughs> That's what, like at my wildlife rehab, like we have all these super cool animals and we have like, um... Some of our resident animals are outdoors, and so people can come on this trail and, like, actually see them. And we had a bald eagle at one point, and, like, people were calling, like, constantly, like, do you guys have the bald eagle? Can we come see it? I'm like, does nobody care about the other animals? <laughs> it's like a, it's like your attraction animal, like when there's a baby panda at the zoo. Yeah, I'm like, we have a, right, I'm like, we have a turkey vulture, and she's super cool, so why don't you want to come <laughs> see her? <laughs> Justice for the turkey vulture. <laughs> yes. So yes, that has been our uh, episode on frogs and toads. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. 
If you did, you can catch us on Instagram at Bowen and Pine. Do I have that right? Yes. You can email us at Rowan and A and D Pine Pod at gmail.com. We're also Rowan Pine Pod on TikTok. And yes. I have been Neve. I'm Emily. And uh, fuck yeah, folklore. Fuck yeah, folklore. And frogs. And frogs. Yay. Okay, we'll catch you next time. Every second Wednesday. Catch you next time. Bye. Bye.